John Slocum said, you know, it plays a little bit soft. Wide receiver James Jones figures they could have cut the thing a little bit better. He said it'll play like the old days when he played on a park field. We'll see how things hold up in the fourth quarter. Back to you. All right, Pam, thank you very much. And so the Green Bay Packers will start with the football. Randall Cobb, the exciting rookie and second round pick from Kentucky who dazzled on opening night that Thursday night with that 108 yard return is waiting for it. Robbie Gold's got a big leg and will drive it out of the back of the end zone. Well what do you think Mr. Aikman if you had your pick of any quarterback how about any quarterback wearing the number 12 where does Aaron <laughs> Rodgers rank on your list hard to imagine that he's just 27 years old and I think if you were starting a team as I've said many times he would certainly be the guy that I'd want to build it around. I don't know that I've seen a quarterback really develop as quickly as he has from his first year as a starter. This is year number four. As the starter for the Packers he knows what this rivalry is all about. Grant will start the day and break free for a nice run. 13 yards. One cut up the field and we look at his defense. Steltz was in on that play and he gets the start on the back end. Up front Troy here's where it really has to happen for the Bears with that cover too. They don't blitz a lot. They need pressure from their front four. And that was that's what was lacking last week in that loss to the New Orleans Saints in week one against the Falcons. They got pressure with their front four last week. They did not. And today they can't afford to have to create pressure with secondary blitzes. Rodgers hangs in and fires a nice comeback throw strike to Greg Jennings for 12 and a first down. And one of the reasons why you say that Troy is there's nobody better in this league right now in facing and dealing with the blitz than Aaron Rodgers. Oh, he's been good for a while now when faced with pressure and the reason for that is one he's very composed. But probably more importantly he has playmakers at virtually every position that can get open for him when matched up man to man. They fake it to Grant and Rodgers has started two for two both are to Jennings. Both are for first downs in this one for 19 yards. Now, a lot of times we're going to talk about this two deep coverage, two safeties deep for the Chicago Bears. That's what they were in there. And you'd like to think that with a little safety help, you can play a little bit more aggressively with that wide receiver. Tim Jennings could have, but going up against Greg Jennings and his ability to get off the line of scrimmage and then a ball placed perfectly by Aaron Rodgers. Again, Jennings, nice move. And that's now four plays, four first downs as that goes to the 25, 11 yards. Stelts on the tackle. And just to repeat what you said, said at the top, Chris Harris, the starting strong safety, still out with his bad hamstring. And Major Wright is out with that head neck injury he suffered last week in New Orleans. And what the Bears have to be able to do defensively and something usually they're very good at is once a receiver catches the ball then you've got to get to the football and get them on the ground. You can't afford to miss tackles like we just saw. Flag is thrown defense may have been across early Tillman with a pick but will it stand. Tillman is running downfield the referees now try and catch up to the play. But there was a flag thrown at the start of it as Tillman is knocked down inside the 45. But this looks like it's against Chicago eliminating the interception. We'll get the call. Everybody Troy's headed back down to the other end. Yeah, it looked like Lance Briggs was the guy who crossed the plane first. And then Aaron Rodgers, knowing that he had defensive offsides, he went ahead and, and threw it Offside. up. Defense number five. Five yard penalty is still first down. You know, good veteran move there by Aaron Rodgers, knowing that he had drawn Lance Briggs offsides. He's got a free play. So he takes a shot to the corner of the end zone, even though it wasn't open. Although, had he have seen Jermichael Finley right up the seam, then it would have been an easy touchdown for the Green Bay Packers. 
You can see Jermichael Finley lined up there at the tight end position. He comes off, and Israel Adonijay was the was the only guy that potentially could have covered that, and obviously that's not going to happen. Rodgers in this offense have not hey. turned the ball over yet. We need team. We need team. And there was movement to give the five yards back. Offense number 70. Five yard penalty, first down, 10 yards to go. Packers lost Darren College to Arizona, so TJ Lang won a training camp battle with Derek Sherrod, the first round pick out of Mississippi State. They've been very happy with Lang's run blocking. Another big body. This is a good offensive line in front of Aaron Rodgers. Cover him up here. That's Jermichael Finley. DJ Moore got there late. Penalty flags again, and the pass is incomplete for Donald Driver. Three consecutive flags thrown on three consecutive plays. Formation. Offense number 71 was not on the line of scrimmage. 70 not on the line of scrimmage. Five yard pick. Still first down. Remember the last time these two teams met during the regular season here in Chicago, the Packers committed 18 penalties. Which was a big reason why the Bears won that game 20 to 17. Now it's first and 15. <laughs> Mike Carey made an announcement. We've already heard his mic is cutting in and out. And we'll see if they move the ball. They do. Forward back to the original line of scrimmage. So they've gone back and forth, back and forth with his football. I will tell you, Joe, this is very disruptive for offensive football, particularly one like the Green Bay Packers, who like to get in rhythm. They like to get in and out of huddle and get the ball snapped, but they've gotten out of whatever whatever rhythm they had going. The Bears declined the penalties instead of first and 15 it's second and 10 and Rodgers connects again with Greg Jennings and Jennings takes it down inside the 10 a completion of 18 yards and Rodgers has started hot. That's what we talked about if you don't get the pressure by the front four then you bring Lance Briggs now James Starks is able to come up actually it's Merriweather they pick that safety blitz up but when you do that then you've got man to man on the outside and if you don't get home against this Green Bay Packer team you're going to have some real problems it's asking a lot of your secondary players to try to man up. 319. On first and goal they fake it to Grant throw it to a photographer. Out of the back of the end zone Jordy Nelson who's become a major weapon for Aaron Rodgers after that season he had last year in a Super Bowl where he had nine catches 140 yards and a touchdown it was I guess the closest one to it but Rodgers was not on the same page and that doesn't happen very often with those two second and goal. Flags. Play continues and a touchdown. It's your Michael Finley, but we'll get the call. A lot of movement along the line prior to the snap. It looks like it'll stand. Offside defense number 90 jumped into the neutral zone as they climb. The score is good. Well, here's what they're able to do with your Michael Finley. They line him up as the widest wide receiver. And you see the move then that he puts on Merriweather. That's a mismatch for him. Finley can run routes like a wide receiver. Now, again, Aaron Rodgers able to use snap count. A lot of times when you're playing on the road, particularly down towards the end zone, it gets so loud that the opposing offense cannot use snap count. He's been able to now effectively a couple of times on this drive to draw them off sides. And a 
it's seven nothing Green Bay. As we turn the clock back to January in the NFC Championship game when the temperature was much much colder. And they do it differently here at Soldier Field. This will be fun. Touchdown! Touchdown! And what an impressive start to this game for the Packers. The knee obviously is bothering Jay Cutler. Great throw by Caleb Haney. Making it happen. The Green Bay Packers beat their rival and off to the Super Bowl they go. And off to the Super Bowl they went and they were winners in Super Bowl 45. Fourth Super Bowl championship for the Green Bay Packers and there's the MVP from that game in Arlington Texas Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, we kind of wrote that team from the end of the regular season on through the playoffs had their last six games including you know that Super Bowl victory and boy, a team that just got hot at just the right time the Bears fans know had they have beaten the Green Bay Packers in the last game of the season the Packers don't even get into the playoffs but Aaron Rodgers he was special during that run and he's been special here in the early going of the 2011 season. Really the only team that slowed him down during the postseason numbers wise the Bears defense they didn't slow him down on the opening drive here today. Devin Hester will take it out. And he cannot make the 25 knocked down near the 23. And we'll look at this Chicago offense and the key is protecting Jay Cutler as they have allowed a league high 11 sacks. The Bears get Roy Williams back but it's been a lot of Matt Forte and not a lot downfield to the wide receivers in the Chicago offense. <laughs> yeah I'm not sure where they would be if not for Matt Forte and I'll tell you talk about tough weeks and Jay Cutler this past week after the beating that he took How about Mike Tice I'm sure he's been keeping the lights on late there at the Bears facility the, the third different offensive line combination in as many weeks. Delayed handoff and in the backfield Matthews makes the play on Forte a loss of one. And now the defense which surprisingly has given up a lot of passing yardage first to Drew Brees and most recently to Cam Newton. Here's Clay Matthews that outside linebacker and he makes that first play. You, know, you never know what a team's going to be or what a defense is going to be and you'd like to think that the Packers are much better than where they're ranked after two weeks and I believe that they are. But they've given up a lot of passing yards as you said. This one is a nice catch made by Sonsenbacher. He's forced out as we look at this replay realize that the Green Bay Packers Troy are playing without Nick Collins and that is a three time pro bowler at free safety. A guy with 17 interceptions over the last three years. The nose for the ball can cover hits. I mean he has done it all and that's a big loss out with a neck injury. That's a huge blow. There's no doubt about that because like you said I mean he's one of the many guys back on that end of the field that are ball hawks. I mean they're playmakers and they've got a lot of them on this defensive side of the ball. On third down Cutler steps up and fires for a first down. Catch is made by Johnny Knox. A nice pocket for Cutler and a 13 yard completion. Well, unlike last week, we're seeing the Chicago Bears doing a better job of handling the pressure. This time they're going to bring Charles Woods in the second time in as many snaps. And they've got Matt Forte blocking him up. Jay Cutler steps up in the pocket and takes advantage of it. And that's something that they failed to do last week. And they kept seeing it, kept seeing it. And you knew coming into this game with Dom Capers, one, it's what he likes to do. They were going to test this Bears offense early, and so far the Bears have answered the bell. Now it's first and 15. Ball start. Offense number 68. Five yard penalty is still first down. And we talked about it. We did the game last week in New Orleans, and you said, yes, Jay Cutler is under pressure. He's been hit a lot, sacked a lot, but there are times where he has to trust his protection step into the throw which he did on that third down completion. And now it's first and 15. This one is tipped. We welcome in a new audience 
He just missed a tipped ball off the hand of Charles Woodson. We are in Chicago. And the Green Bay Packers took the opening kickoff, went down the field, and it was Aaron Rodgers to Jermichael Finley for the first points of the day. The Packers, who won here in January, the NFC Championship game lead seven to nothing with a record of two and zero. Jay Cutler just converted on a third down and long, and now faces second and fifteen. An opening Packer drive, eight plays, eighty yards, three and a half minutes on the clock. The late handoff to Forte, and he's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Let's go to Kurt for a game break. It's 2020 in Minnesota after being down 20 to nothing to the Vikings. The Lions ride the foot of 20-year veteran Jason Hansen to an overtime victory, 26-23. Didn't get to OT, but the Bills won on the last play of regulation. Ryan Lindell lifting them over New England 34-31. They picked off Brady four times in that game and came back from 21-0 down. Joe Troy and Pan. Wow. Two very interesting updates, and the first one has a lot to do with this division. And it's third and 16. Cutler steps into it, completes it. That's Hester, but he is well short of a first down. Well, that's a uh... That's tough duty right there for an offense when you've got third and long and so the Green Bay Packers who had shown pressure on early downs they then drop eight guys into coverage and you've got to then throw it underneath like Jay Cutler did and hope somebody can make a play. But not a bad drive overall for the Bears they showed some good things picking up the blitz if they can continue to do that because they're going to see more of it. They've got a chance then at some point for a big play down the field. Hodlish will punt it. Cobb waits for it. Traffic makes the catch and goes down immediately. We'll take our first commercial break. Corey Graham, their top special teamer downfield to make the stop. 7-0 Green Bay. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. Well, this NFC North's got a little different look to it, doesn't it? Remember when the schedule used to come out and these two fan bases, I'm sure, would look at Detroit and mark down two wins. They come back today, win at Minnesota, and they've started 3-0. Yeah, they were kind of the media darling coming into this season, and usually when that happens, the, that particular team will struggle. But well, the Detroit Lions have gotten off to a great start big win earlier today against the Minnesota Vikings there at the Metrodome only the 16th NFL start for Stafford team that went winless in 08 his pass is another completion to Jennings who catches anything near him for nine yards yeah not a not a particularly great throw by Aaron Rodgers good adjustment by Greg Jennings something that we've all grown accustomed to watching but what we're seeing from the Packers is exactly what we saw last week from the New Orleans Saints. A lot of quick passes. Aaron Rodgers getting the ball out of his hands. Don't want to sit back there early in a game with pass rushers like Julius Peppers coming off the edge. Doing a good job hitting some underneath routes. Rodgers has thrown it nine straight times. And guess who's on the other end? Greg Jennings, who now already has 78 yards. And there's 655 left in the opening quarter. But a player is down. That is Balaga, the starting right tackle. There he is with his left leg being rolled on by Toina. He gets attention. We'll take a break. Today's game is sponsored by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. Using a hard snap count, Aaron Rodgers. Offense number 71, five yard penalty is still first. Only fools Josh Sitton. That makes it first and 15. Balaga needed some help getting off the field. The guy who took over at right tackle last year, and that would be a big loss up front. Yeah, first round pick from a year ago and played last season and had a nice rookie year. Came into this season playing well in the first two weeks, and that is, that's a that's a big blow. If he's not able to return, Marshall Newhouse takes over at right tackle. 
Second run of the day first for Starks and he takes it across the 35 picked up a couple where he's knocked down by Brian Erlacher. You know we've seen the Packers now being pretty methodical in how they're going about running their offense. You've got to be very patient typically when you're playing against the Bears or a style of defense like the Bears and not start trying to force the big play and it's sometimes hard to do for an offense like the Green Bay Packers who grow accustomed weekly of making big plays. Aaron Rodgers though very patient and has been very deliberate here in the early going. Delayed handoff to Starks. Riggs came in on the stop a gain of three and just to back up what you're saying opposing quarterbacks talk about being patient against Chicago. The Bears defense has allowed the seventh highest completion percentage in the NFL but the third lowest yards per completion so it has to come in smaller chunks. That's pretty typical for this style of play. A quarterback is going to complete a high percentage of passes because you're not pushing the ball as far down the field. This could be a big Bears stop underneath it starts nowhere to go and a nice job by Chicago's defense as Jennings made the initial hit. Well, that's a that's a great defensive series right there for the Chicago Bears because last week they couldn't get off the field on third down a big third down a third and long situation against the Packers offense that had already gone down the field on their first possession and scored a touchdown nice job getting off the field for the Bears last day will punt it. They did a good job in the championship game of keeping it away from Hester. Hester with a chance to move with it. And a nice return out across the 30. Take a break, come back. Bears will have it. Back to work. Jay Cutler down by seven. Today's game is sponsored by DirecTV. This season, NFL Sunday ticket is included when you switch. By State Farm. For auto, home, life, and banking, get to a better state. And by Sprint. All football, no limits. Only from Sprint. The sun pops out here at Soldier Field, and we are prepared for the second possession for the Bears. Jay Cutler dropped back four times. That opening possession was not hit. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's got to be happy about that, right? And the other good thing that happened so far for them is that they've gotten some completions to their wide receivers, which they were unable to do last week. Cutler's first three have been to wide receivers. Last week he hit Matt Forte out of the backfield ten times. Little shoulder fake looking for Roy Williams and he's picked off. Intercepted by Morgan Burnett. Trying to go deep and Jay Cutler is intercepted by Burnett who gets his second pick of the season. No and they do a double move on Tremont Williams on the outside. You can see right here is Tremont Williams. Now when Jay Cutler comes back he's going to pump to the outside with the shoulders. Now when he does that yeah he's got Tremont Williams beat but he brings the safety then Morgan Burnett over the top. Right here is the, the shoulder fake that gets Williams open but it also then brings the safety and it was an inside throw too and so one you've got to hold the safety Burnett Jay Cutler does and then when you throw you've got to lay that out to the sideline so that the safety has more ground to cover if he's going to break that ball up Second pick thrown by Cutler this season as Ryan Grant carries it and picks up two. You know, that's always the dilemma when when you're playing quarterback as we see Belaga go into the locker room to get checked out. That's always the dilemma as the quarterback as to whether or not when you're making a pump fake do you fake the corner and try to get him to bite or do you pump the safety to hold him so he can't get over the top and then make a play on the ball. He didn't have to pump the outside because Tremont Williams was in man coverage. He was actually just isolated on the wide receiver. Pretty good design right there by Mike March, just not executed very well. And off is to Starks, and Starks cannot get started. Okoye made the stop. Bears kind of fell into Okoye. Former number 10 overall pick by the Houston Texans just released. Here are the early game headliners. 
Fitzpatrick who played collegially at Harvard and now is the toast of the town in Buffalo Matthew Stafford who we will see next week in Dallas his hometown to take on the Cowboys it's third and seven. Rodgers down he goes penalty flag comes in as Peppers got his hands on Aaron Rodgers. And this one is against Green Bay a hold and that'll force a punt. Holding offense number seven six is down. They get Clifton as Peppers got Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, he's trying to throw it down the middle hitter Jermichael Finley and uh, pretty good coverage overall because Aaron Rodgers comes back and they get Clifton on the hold. But there was time for Aaron to get rid of the football. But Julius Peppers just keeps playing. He's able to get in there and then make a play. Nice job there for the defense again after a turnover forcing a three and out. Mastic hits it end over end. Check up at the 29. It's where the Bears will have it. Turned it over last time. They possessed the ball down by seven. Bears have it for the third time down by seven. Starting at their 29, it's Forte. The edge. J.J. Hawk makes the stop again at five. Back to the interception last time they had it. There's Morgan Burnett. He's going to work to the middle, which is what you want. Right here, Jay Cutler's got to think, I've got a home run on the outside as long as Roy Williams can beat Tremont Williams. Look at the ground here that Morgan Burnett makes up going over the top. Now, if that ball is thrown to the outside, at worst, it's probably an incompletion. So, a ball that got away from Jay Cutler, but Morgan Burnett really showing a lot of range there from the middle of the field. What a play by Matthews as he slams Forte down to the ground. That's the, that's twice now they've tried pulling left guard Chris Williams to block Clay Matthews. You see Chris Williams 74 and both times they've tried that Clay Matthews has been there to make a play because he's too fast. <laughs> so I think I think I'd stop trying to pull Chris Williams to block Clay Matthews. Playing with a pulled quad. He's been a pro bowler each year. He's been in the NFL. He is the heart and soul of this Green Bay defense. There are, as Troy mentioned earlier, plenty of other playmakers. It's third down and nine as Cutler steps up and overthrows a wide open Roy Williams. That's a pretty good route there by Roy Williams. They've got the two deep coverage. Green Bay does. That's the hole in the zone. And Roy Williams does a nice job of getting into it and a throw that was just high by Jay Cutler. Now this is a defense for the Green Bay Packers through two games. Last in the NFL getting off the field on third down. Done a decent job here in the early going. Good punt by Podlish. With Cobb from inside the 25. And Randall Cobb with a couple of moves takes it out across the 40. A 20 yard return by the electrifying rookie. 7 0 Packers with the ball. Green Bay Packers have the ball. Score, score, score. Score, score, score. Here it goes. Hunt. Starting at the 40. Donald Driver. Tried to take off before he made the catch. Green Bay's all time leader in receptions in last week moved in front of James Lofton in their game at Carolina for all time receiving yards by a Packer at second and ten. And you think about Donald Driver and Greg Jennings and Jordy Nelson and Jermichael Finley, <laughs> you say, man, that's tough duty for any defense to try to match up with the weapons that Aaron Rodgers has at his disposal. Rodgers throws to John Kuhn as fullback. Picks up seven, third down and three. Coming up, Tim Jennings and Lance Briggs on the tackle. 
you know, again we're we're seeing Aaron Rodgers not trying to force anything down the field he's being very patient taking the other knee things and at some point something's going to break you know at some point he keeps taking those there's going to be a shot down the field that he's going to be able to try to take advantage of it's a seven nothing game Green Bay with the ball third down and three when we come back we are through one back after this from your local Fox station. Seven to nothing Green Bay on top third down and three as we start quarter number two. Peppers came across and he says he was drawn off by Clifton. You know speaking of Peppers ever since Brian Belago went down for the most part Peppers has continued to work against Chad Clifton. Neutral zone infractions defense number 90 five yard penalty enforcement results first down. You know I've seen one time to where he's tried to test Marshall Newhouse who came in for Belaga there at right tackle but you know, I would have expected to see him lined <laughs> lined up over Newhouse and make sure that you know he could block him before he starts switching back over to that other side. First down by penalty and now a handoff to Ryan Grant. We missed basically all of last season. Grant picks up nine and a half after having back to back 1,200 yard rushing seasons in 08 and 09. And now he is in a split backfield basically with the carries for the guy who started last year, especially in the postseason, James Starks. Second and one. Second and one, it's Grant. He ran into a wall and went backward. Lost half a yard, third down and short coming up. Nice job by Erlacher and Toina to make it third down. And here is the NFC North with Detroit's win at Minnesota. The Vikings blow another late lead today. Detroit hasn't been to the playoffs since 99. Off to a good start. Green 19. Green 19. A blitz. Green Bay picks it up and Finley on a comeback throw, almost Troy, one of those back shoulder throws as he turned around. Stelts didn't react and it's an easy pitch and catch. Yeah if you're going to throw the ball or at least try to get man coverage against the Bears third and short is really a good time to do it because that's when you get them in man coverage and you see Stelts. I mean this guy Jermichael Finley is is essentially a wide receiver with unbelievable size 6'5, 250 pounds. We've already seen in this game we see it every week he can run all the routes and if he's matched up with Stelts or Merriweather as he has been already in this game. They could throw it to him all day. That was Crabtree in motion. Handoff is to Grant. And Ryan Grant trying to get to the edge cannot get around Jennings, who saved a touchdown as Grant picks up nine. That's just good vision right there by Ryan Grant and Marshall Newhouse coming in off the bench. He does a, a good job of doubling down and then. Making a block for Ryan Grant. You're going to see number 74 right how right here how he comes off of it gets Erlacher and then on the back side there Crabtree is the one who made another key block for that cutback lane for Ryan Grant. Second and one. Green 18. Fake the handoff. Rogers throws. For the touchdown, and again, it's Jermichael Finley. Finley's got his first two touchdowns of the season here in the first half at Soldier Field. Troy Rogers, who can move, always has his eyes down the field looking for someone, and this time he found 88. 
Not a bad guy to find. Jermichael Finley comes off the ball initially like he's blocking Lance Briggs. I'm not sure exactly. It didn't look like there was anybody going out on a screen play. But he turns around, sees his quarterback in trouble, and slides to an open spot. Aaron Rodgers makes it a little bit more difficult on him than he had to make it, but a good reaction by Finley for the touchdown. They review every scoring play. So they're going to give it a look. Finley with his sixth career multiple touchdown game. If it stands, back after this. Today's game is sponsored by Verizon, America's largest and most reliable wireless network. By the Ford F-150, the only truck available with EcoBoost. And by the Miller Lite Aluminum Pint. Four more ounces of that great Pilsner taste. We'll get the call. The touchdown will stand. A clean catch for Finley, his second score of the day. The ruling on the fifth by the... Instant replay operator, the score is good. So Finley's got two. The Packers had 10 first downs to the Bears, one so far in this first half. And now Jay Cutler in this offense. He's down by 14. So the Bears will get it back. Aaron Rodgers, two more scores. He can light up the scoreboard, up 14 zip. Aaron Rodgers, three of four on that drive, 38 yards, and a seven yarder for the touchdown to Jermichael Finley. 12 minutes left, first half. The Bears will get it back. It'll be their fourth possession. They have a total of 24 yards and one first down. Johnny Knox deep it's out of the back of the end zone and the Bears will start at their 20 and now well the running game hasn't done much everybody wants balance in the Chicago offense but Jay Cutler and the air attack has got to go to work for the Chicago Bears. Yeah they can still maintain some type of balance they're down two scores obviously but you look at this game the time of possession clearly in the favor of the Green Bay Packers and so. You know, right now, yes, the defense has to get off the field, but the Pat or uh, the Bears offensively, they've got to put together a drive here. They're without Lance Lewis in their starting lineup at right guard, Spencer at right guard, only yell at right tackle for the rookie Karimi, and Cutler throws over the middle. Devin Hester. And a big play from Jay Cutler on first down, 37 yards. And they've been waiting for something like that. Well, Devin Hester is able to get into the zone, and he really does a good job of setting it down and allowing Jay Cutler a good area then to throw the football, which which allowed him to come back to the outside rather than run through the middle where the Green Bay Packers were there waiting on him. Turned into a nice game. Takes it to the Green Bay 43. 37 yarder. To Devin Hester. Yeah. Delay a game. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty is still first. So getting up into the huddle after that 37 yard gain, getting the line, Troy, all that shifting and all that movement prior to the snap, and the play clock expired. So now first and 15. Hand it off to Forte. The guy who has been the focus of this offense, counting for 52% of the team's total yards coming in, picks up four. Well, this October and coming up in a couple of weekends, it's the ALCS. And these are the teams still in it. The Red Sox lost game one of the doubleheader at the Yankees today. So the lead is dwindling for Boston even more. And that starts on October 8th. Only on Fox at second and 11. Sansenbacher in the backfield. Cutler throws and the pass complete. 
That's Sam Hurd, and Hurd is upended with a first down inside the 30. 17 yards on second and 11. Well, again, they're going to bring Charles Woodson 21, and the Bears pick it up. You know, they've spent all week long working on pass protection against the Blitz. You know, Colors wanted to get it out, but he hangs in there, and he delivers a good throw. And I know on the back end there, you see Sam Hurd, who makes the catch. Safety driving on it. And if Jay Cutler hadn't put that right on Hurd, that might have that might have been an interception for the Packers. They fake the toss. Trying to set up the wide receiver screen. And instead inside the five, it's Johnny Knox. Cutler gets hot. This one good for 24. Well, we're seeing Jay Cutler really hang in the pocket. Right now, he's got Clay Matthews, who's putting pressure on him. But he steps up, hangs in there, knows he's going to get hit. And he puts the ball on the outside shoulder then of Johnny Knox. I mean, it wasn't bad coverage. But because he put it on the outside shoulder there on the sidelines, there was no chance for the defender to make a play. Mike McCarthy ran down and he's going to call a timeout. Exactly what Chicago needed. 77 yards on this drive, down by 14. Bears have a first and goal from the three. Well, I know Mike March would love to try to pound the ball here. We'll see what he's thinking. I know the best down to go play action. Of course, here they go empty backfield. So now it's either a Cutler quarterback. Quarterback draw. Or he's, well, now they've got him in the backfield. Quick throw and incomplete. Roy Williams could not hang on. So all that movement prior to the snap, they eventually had Forte back. Jermon Williams, who missed last week, broke it up. It's a good throw by Jay Cutler because Roy Williams has to go inside like he did, and he has to beat Jermon Williams, and he did a good job of that. And then Cutler sees Tremont Williams driving on it. So the only place he can put the ball then is on the back hip of Roy Williams. A perfectly thrown ball that should have been a touchdown. Now second and goal for Tag. And a nice play by Bishop in the backfield. A loss of one third and goal coming up. Yeah, that becomes the problem when you... When you throw it then on first down and it's incomplete and now you're trying to run it and see what you can do whether or not you're going to be committed to running it three straight downs or but Bishop comes in you know, really unblocked and doesn't give Matt Forte much of a chance. Now you're pretty much having to throw it here on third down. Cutler over the middle sounds and Bucker for the touchdown. Good drive put together by the Chicago offense. Sonsenbacher, his second NFL touchdown. Yeah, Sonsenbacher, he's been a little busy the last couple weeks. He's going to come here, put a little move, and then over the middle of the ball, and Jay Cutler's going to hang with him. The linebackers for the Green Bay Packers, they are very weak in coverage. You know, they've been beat through the first two weeks in that area of the field because of poor coverage by the linebackers got beat again. And it's a seven-point game. With 8-12 left, Sonsenbacher is developing into a weapon for Jake Cutler. He's in, hung on, 14-7 in Chicago. Well, good to be back in Chicago, and this game just got a lot more interesting with the Bears taking it down the field. 80 yards on the drive, Cutler got hot. Seven point game as Gold drives it out of the end zone, keeps it out of the hands of Randall Cobb. This November, Fox Sports steps into the octagon with an epic heavyweight title fight as the number one ranked contender in the world. Junior Dos Santos squares off with undefeated world champion Kane Velasquez. In the must see live event you can only catch right here on Fox. That is Saturday, November 12th. Right here, and here's the home, the hometown touchdown to Sonsenbacher. Seven point game, and Aaron Rodgers starts 
at the 20. Handoff to Grant. Hesitated for a bit and picked up six. Aaron Rodgers has started this day 11 for 14. Two touchdowns, both to Jermichael Finley. Greg Jennings got off to a fast start, and Ryan Grant, 32 yards. Picks up a first down. We step aside for a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. Arizona at Seattle. Kevin Cobb scrambling, buying time when you got a guy like Larry Fitzgerald that usually pays off. In the double coverage, Fitzgerald pulls it down. 12 yard score. Arizona leads it 10 to 3. That game in the second quarter. Joe Troy, Penn. And here are the numbers for Kevin Cobb. Over 100 yards in that NFC West divisional battle. First and 10. Movement again, hard count by Aaron Rodgers. Encroachment, defense number 94. Five yard penalty is still first down. Nick Reed came across too early. Yeah, we've seen that now a few times, and I, I've got to tell you, Joe, going back to last week's game and then throughout this week, all the attention was paid on the hits that Jay Cutler took and Mike March not running the football. I think what was lost in last week's performance was that defense didn't play too good either. They gave up a 79 yard touchdown on third and 12. And this this organization this team has been about defense. This is a time where this defense has to step up when their offense just went down and scored a touchdown. They can't afford to go up another points here. Nice play by Briggs as he knocks down Starks a loss of one. You look at what the Green Bay Packers have done here in the first half offensively. They're closing in on on 200 yards of total offense. And Aaron Rodgers, as we talked about, a lot of it is because they're not going to get the ball down the field that often. They've got to be a little bit more conservative on where they're throwing it. So he's completed a high percentage of passes. But they've had some success here. Second and six delayed handoff starts. Delayed and that cost him. As Starks loses a yard for the second consecutive carry. And look at Tillman on top of a couple of bodies like a fireman's carry. And he's on top of Starks. I think Tillman he's just he's trying to punch the ball out and you see right here he. He, 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 I mean, he's good at it. He's knocked the ball loose. He's forced a fumble in, in each of the first two games, but that's a little bit unorthodox right there. What a great picture. <laughs> Play clock is winding down, and Aaron Rodgers will have to spend a timeout before third and seven. Crowd is back into it. Timeout Green Bay. They have one remaining as they lead by seven. Third down at seven. There's Charles Tillman during the break. Having a discussion or being talked to by Mike Carey <laughs> as he was trying to punch the ball out, and then Josh Sitton tried to get Tillman off the shoulder of James Starks. Just a three man rush. Pass caught by Jordy Nelson. His first catch. And when you worry about Jermichael Finley and Greg Jennings, don't forget about number 87. Good for 18 yards. And a nice catch there. A ball that was high and away and had a little something on it, too, into the middle of the field. It's just a, a nice grab there by Jordy Nelson. And a you know, guy who's probably developed. I mean, when he first came in and started playing, Obviously a good player a talented guy and making the adjustments and all the wide receiver but 
over the last few years. I mean, he's essentially become the number two wide receiver behind Greg Jennings. Big first down on third and seven. Now it's James Jones. Don't forget about 89. He was upset after his activity week one. And according to James Jones, he said, I'm not worried about getting the ball. Just let me get on the field and have an opportunity to make a catch because this Green Bay offense is just loaded. Well, and they've done a good job of spreading it around coming into this game. If you look at the top three receivers, just one reception separated each of those guys. So they spread it around, and but somewhere in there, a guy's not going to get the ball as many times as what he'd like, and that guy's been James Jones. Back to the ground, and Ryan Grant room to run. Now the Green Bay offense gets on a roll good for 14 on the heels of Aaron Rodgers finding his seventh different receiver on the completion of Jones. Chad Clifton right here is going to collapse it and then Ryan Grant senses that and he's able to come back. He gets the pressure in his face but he's able to make the cut then to the backside. That's really where he's so effective not an overly fast guy not an overly quick guy but he's got good vision a one cut back as we just saw. Newhouse. Ball starts. Offense number 74. Jared Turner still first. A lot of hard count on the road being used by Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, and the and the real key is there's been times, especially on this drive, to where the Bears crowd has gotten loud and you're not then able to use it. You got to go silent count. We've seen that. But then when they've had a big play and they've been able to take the crowd out of it, we've immediately seen Aaron Rodgers go then to the hard count. I just think he's got such a great command of this offense and, and how to utilize the things that that he has available to him to neutralize a defense. And now a delay of game. That not being one of them. Delay. Oh. We've seen a few delay of games now and uh, a couple of them you know by the Green Bay Packers one of which they had to burn the time out to keep from having it. And Mike Carey and his his referee or officials here are they're starting a fast play clock. You know it happened to the Chicago Bears after one of their completions where they got the delay of game. And so they're they're marking the ball and they're starting that play clock a little bit faster than what both of these teams are accustomed to. Now there's something on the field or wrong with the field about the 17 yard line. So Mike Carey is going to go to the sideline and maybe ask for a grounds crew member the grounds crew personnel or somebody to get something that's on about the 17. Well number six there's filing a report. <laughs> a freshly resodded field. Ground field. We're well by the ground. A dangerous situation down on the field, so something wrong. Something sticking out, whether it's it's like a coil or some sort of metallic stick or something sitting out, maybe from when they resodded this field. Don't no worry about that. And we'll talk about next week. Early games. It's a single header weekend. And some good matchups, including the Lions and the Cowboys, which will be fun to watch. Matthew Stafford back in his hometown taking on the Dallas Cowboys. Giants and Cardinals. Giants had a huge win today in Philadelphia. And that begins with a Bill Ford Top Fox NFL Sunday pregame show at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Looking forward to watching those Detroit Lions next week. As you said, Matthew Stafford going back home, went to the same high school as Bobby Lane there in Dallas, Texas, and got the Detroit Lions off to a great start. That was the issue. It's been fixed. First and 20. Ten yards of penalties. And this one is nearly picked off by Stelts. James Jones is overthrown. So first a false start then a delay a game and that's the reason why it's now with this incompletion second and 20. 
Yeah, you see James Jones he, he shut it down and I, I think he did the right thing Aaron Rodgers thought he was going to stay on the move. But this is a this is a big possession for the Chicago's defense. Green Bay one timeout remaining. Pass is caught underneath by Finley. That's good for 12 yards. Third down coming up. And that will take us to the two minute warning. The Bears have three timeouts, but they will hang on to all three. Two minutes left in the half here in Chicago. This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or of any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. Leading by seven. Two minutes left here in Chicago. Third down and nine. flag yet again. Ball starts. Offense. Five third penalty is still still down. Look at TJ Lang. You circled your Michael Finley who was out on the outside being defensed by Tim Jennings a cornerback. Finley already has two touchdowns. Well, I didn't see much that TJ Lang did on that to warrant being called for a false start. So if they single Jermichael Finley, you can bet that's where he's going. It is dumped off for Starks, incomplete, trying to set up a screen. It's fourth down. Oh, it's a nice job right there by Chicago defensively because the one thing you anticipate going into a game against the Packers is they're going to be able to move the football. They just got way too many weapons in order to shut them down. When they get down in there, they have been, as you mentioned, Joe, they've been good in the red zone. Well, the Bears defensively have been pretty good too. So, yeah, they gave up some yardage, but to hold them to a field goal attempt here was nice right before the end of the half. 37 yard try is perfect from Mason Crosby. It's a 10 point game. We are a minute 51 away from halftime. Here's Kurt Menefee to tell us what's coming up. All right, guys, it seems as though the more weeks we go in the NFL, the more excitement we find. Coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, we'll have all the scores and highlights from a huge week three, including monster comebacks by both the Bills and the Lions to remain unbeaten. But for now, back to you. We'll see you at halftime. It's a great Tony Wise. Yes, it was. Um, you know what I thought was interesting, Joe, on the pregame show earlier today, they were talking about why the offenses have been going up and down the field really at a historical rate through the first two weeks of the season where everybody thought the defenses were going to be ahead of the offenses because of the lockout and they're not being an off season and you know nobody really has an answer for that but some I don't know somehow Bradshaw he tried to work in there that it had something to do with a mule or a donkey or some sort and I don't know did you catch that I mean I don't know I did not but I do know that you've asked every offensive person we've talked to so far this season and <laughs> nobody's got a real good answer I did like what Mike McCarthy said because of the lack of hitting in training camp the tackling is not as good as it should be and small plays are turning into big plays and all of these offensive numbers. Here are the offensive leaders for Chicago as they will have time and three timeouts left to try and do something about a 10 point deficit here at home. And you look at Matt Forte and his production six carries just two yards. You know a lot of his production through the first two weeks you know certainly running the ball but also as a receiver. Dom Capers talked about it the guy that we have to control is Matt Forte and they've been able to do that through the first 30 minutes. Out of the shotgun, four guys on the pass rush. Cutler steps in and hits Johnny Knox. Big time throw from Jake Cutler, who had time, and Johnny Knox 
He's good for 40 yards. Good route by Johnny Knox. He pushes up on Charlie Pepper, the safety, who's playing for Nick Collins, and just completely turns him around. Jay knew exactly where he needed to go with the football. You see at the top here, Charlie Pepper, 26. He got turned around and made for an easy completion. Good job by Jamarcus Webb on Eric Walden, who was coming off the edge. Got enough of him to allow that throw to happen. Blitz coming. Bears pick it up and Sonsenbacher to the 35, a gain of five. Plenty of time on the clock, three timeouts. What a lift this would be for the Bears if Cutler could get Chicago into the end zone. Second and five, unblocked. Matt Forte over the middle. Pressure on Cutler as Forte takes it down near the seven. Boy, what a difference from a week ago. We're seeing not only from Jay Cutler, but the entire offense. There's no audibles in this scheme, and so you've got to be on the same page with your receivers. They bring, a, they bring the blitz off the edge, and you've got Matt Forte on a free release out of the backfield. Jay Cutler knows where he's got to go with the ball. A nice catch. I mean, not a great thrown ball by Cutler. A nice adjustment by Forte. And that's how you eliminate the blitz pressure from a defense. Last week, they weren't able to do it. We've seen a number of times now here in this first half against pressure, either blocking it up or getting the ball out of your hands. One or the other, you have to do, and the Bears have done it. Cutler already in this half. With four completions of 20 or more yards. Bishop was coming unblocked. And with that, Forte was left alone. It's first and goal. Cutler similar around his leg and that one was nearly picked off by Bush. Sonsenbacher the intended receiver and Jarrett Bush almost came away with the pick. Uh, you're going to see they put Matt Forte out. You could have hit him right there quick. Instead, Cutler tries to come back to the inside. You throw behind. You got to get that out front. Very fortunate. That that ball, nine times out of ten, is intercepted. And then B.J. Raji, he's the reason that Cutler wasn't able to really make a better throw. He did a good job working over left guard Chris Williams and getting the pressure. Second down and goal. Cutler with protection throws behind Sonsenbacher. And now with under a minute to go, it's third and goal. And this for Chicago. They, you know, they're points down here, but they want seven, not three, as they trail by ten. Cutler got that little last leg whip from Clay Matthews. It's third and goal. Blitz coming. Bears pick it up again. Cutler throws out of the back of the end zone. And a nice job by Green Bay's defense to hold on a first and goal situation. Yeah, I think the fans are a little disappointed that they threw it three straight times and did not attempt to run the football. And but a nice drive nevertheless. You know, being able to come back off of the field goal by the Packers and answer right before the half with a field goal of their own, if they're able to make this, it's a nice job. Bobby Gold is perfect in his career within this range. 25 yarder is automatic. And it's a seven point game, 17 10 Green Bay, with 49 seconds left in the half. Visa halftime is coming up. Kurt Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy, and talk about something to talk about at halftime, and then after the game on the OT, Detroit is three and zero, and the Buffalo Bills are three and zero as they beat Tom Brady and the Patriots in Buffalo. A little bit of a shocker, wasn't it? Tom Brady is sixteen and one, sixteen and two now against the Buffalo Bills, and. Even the Bills 
general manager said he wasn't sure they were really prepared for prime time. The game wasn't played on in prime time, but it was against the New England Patriots. That's a that's a great win and, and one that should really propel the Buffalo Bills onto bigger and better things. Buffalo has not been in the postseason since 99. Here's the play selection halfway through their run total of a week ago and as we mentioned last week Mike March is up in the coaching box for the first time since 99 with St. Louis. I think he's seen Cutler make some good throws he's had. I would say very good protection against a team that loves to bring pressure there have been some open receivers that have been missed. But it's just a seven point game. You can only imagine <laughs> how long those coaches work this week shoring up that protection against the blitz. Green Bay will have it with 49 seconds left in the half one timeout starting at their 20. And we'll see how aggressive Aaron Rodgers and the Packer offense wants to be with a lead on the road in the division. Well. It if I'm Mike McCarthy and I had Aaron Rodgers at quarterback along with everyone else that they have that can catch the ball. I think they're going to be pretty aggressive here. Starting in the shotgun. A lot of times you come out on first down run a screen and just try to see if you can get something going and then to make that decision. A quick throw and the pass complete to Jennings but only for four yards. Now you see Aaron Rodgers he's he's not in any type of hurry up but you know they may take a shot down the field here and see if they can get a big chunk. Starks out to the 33 with a first down clock continues to run now time is called by Green Bay that's their last time out. See Mike McCarthy here, and I just know when you talk about some of the great offensive minds in football, he's not a guy who readily gets talked about, and I think that he should. I, I've been very impressed with him over the last couple of years. That's a we've seen a lot of guys do it, but but it's a lot on your plate when you're the head coach and then also the play caller, and he does a good job of really mixing it up, changing it up. You know, during the playoffs, they ran the ball 30 times in, in each of the three playoff games prior to the Super Bowl. And then all of a sudden, he's playing the Steelers, knowing what he's going up against. They only ran it 13 times in that game and threw the ball very effectively. But he's going to change it up and do what he has to do in order to move the ball against the, against the variety of defensive looks he sees. He's had a top 10 offense all five years as head coach. And Aaron Rodgers is going to go down. First guy there was Julius Peppers. Henry Melton was in on the sack, and that should just about do it for the half, and it will. Melton, who had the big week, week one, two sacks, shut out last week. Peppers is the first guy with pressure off the edge. Rogers steps up, and it's Melton who gets a grab of the jersey and brings down Aaron Rodgers to end the first half in a 17 Ken game here at Soldier Field. Pizza halftime is coming up. We'll step aside. NFC North battle. Packers 2 and 0, Bears 1 and 1. Green Bay up 7 at the half. Welcome to the Visa Halftime Report. More people go with Visa. And welcome to Visa Halftime. Kurt Benefield along with Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy. Let's get right to the scores here in week three. Green Bay, 17-10 on top of Chicago. And another close game going on. Tam uh, Atlanta down by 10 at halftime in Tampa. Arizona right. and Seattle out west. Don't throw that football until you see the whites of their eyes, right, Kurt? There you go. Larry Fitzgerald, he's <laughs> some kind of player. Kevin Cobb, out, spin move, then heave it out there, Jimmy. 12-yard <laughs> touchdown pass. Great job by Fitzgerald. 10 to 6. It is Arizona on top of the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> you like that, don't you? I do like yeah, that. All right. I like this guy too, LaDainian Tomlinson. He can flat out play football. Out of the backfield, little option route. He gets on the inside. 19, 18 yard touchdown pass. 
and it's 17 all Jets and the Raiders. Hey, those Raiders are for real, folks. And then Kansas City at the San Diego Chargers. Our good friend, North Turner, we love him out there. Ryan Matthews, second year running back out of Fresno State, two yard touchdown. And it's 10 to six Chargers over the Scrappy Chiefs. Well, and the Chiefs just scored, so it's 10 to seven right now. Baltimore 27 nothing over the Rams. That one at halftime. The Giants beat Philadelphia, but lost Michael Victor, broken hand in that one. Lions come back from 20 to nothing down at halftime to win in overtime at Minnesota. San Francisco takes care of Cincinnati. The Saints come back to beat Houston. Buffalo once down 21 nothing. Pick off Tom Brady four times and beat the Patriots 34-31 the final. Panthers get their first victory for Cam Newton. Cleveland wins on a last-minute touchdown over Miami. And the Tennessee Titans are now 2-1 and one on the young season, 17-14 the final in that one. All right, Jimmy, let's get back to Green Bay and Chicago. Good ball game here, Kurt. And I think the we're, the thing we're talking about with Jay Cutler, he was sacked so many times last year and again the first two ball games. He's taking his steps. He's getting rid of the football. Five step, ball is out. Hot read, ball is out. No knockdowns, no sacks. Yeah, they're you know, not going to beat themselves, you know, with negative plays. And some of the throws are rushed. Some of the throws aren't aren't on the spot. And I, I think that's a byproduct of just being hit so much, particularly last week. I think Michael's not speaking until he sees the whites of their eyes or something no, going no, on there. No, 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 He's no. just being quiet there. The Visa team play of the first half. Jermichael Finley's first touchdown put the Packers on the board. They're holding on to the lead. Second half, next. Start of the second half here in Chicago, 17 10 Green Bay. We could talk about the world champs, but how about the team that's trailing by seven, the Chicago Bears? Jay Cutler in this offense, they've found some holes in the secondary of the Green Bay Packers so far in this game. Really a nice job. I mean, you can tell that there was a lot of work put into this week and how to block them up and handle the blitz pressure that they knew they were going to face. They've done a nice job, whether they picked it up in protection or Jay Cutler getting the ball out of his hands. Now, they haven't shown balance running the football. They're not having much success with that, which we didn't anticipate against this Packers defense. There's no doubt that if they're going to continue to move the football, they're going to have to be able to do it through the air. Give you a look at these stats after a half of play, and there are the numbers. It's exactly what Troy talked about only two rush yards so far for Chicago compared to 62 for Green Bay. You can follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Johnny Knox waiting for the kick. Bears down by seven will start with a ball. Able to move it, had a first and goal last time they had it. Under a minute to go, opening half, and they had to settle for a 25 yard field goal. Mike Carey ran to the wrong end. So he just did a 100 yard sprint, and now Johnny Knox hopes to do the same. And return out across the 25 down to the field and Pam Oliver. Joe, Mike McCarthy told me he's really disappointed in penalties. Five penalties for 25 yards may not sound like a lot, but he says they're really disruptive. They're coming at a bad time. Lovey Smith was really succinct at halftime when he told me that um, he was really encouraged. We haven't even played our best football and we're only down seven. Back to you. All right, Pam, the offensive line has done a nice job. Protecting Cutler against that heavy Green Bay pass rush, which features 
Clay Matthews and others. Ready. Ready, honey. Not this time. Jarius Wynn comes through to make the play. Seemingly untouched. And Jay Cutler is sacked a loss of eight. Now right here left guard and left tackle they just turned Jarius Wynn completely free. I mean it, whether Chris Williams should have come out and handled that or Jamarcus Webb come down on it. But it looked to me like it was left guard Chris Williams who failed to understand the protection and Jarius Wynn just gets a free run. That's the first Green Bay sack. Second and 18 for Tay. Lost a yard. Eric Walden, who had such a big game in the season ender last year, week 17, had three sacks, 16 tackles, is there to make that stop to bring up third and 19. And yeah, such a tough first down play to come out to start this second half after playing pretty well there offensively and getting the field goal to end the first half. You know to get the opening possession then of the second half and take that on the very first play. That's a tough one to handle. Ready to hunt. Third down and 19. Pass is right off the chest of Kellen Davis. It was odd. He didn't even get his hands up. News at 11. I mean that thing, that thing just ricocheted right off his chest. <laughs> You're right. I don't think he did get his hands up. You know, Jay Cutler just throws a bullet. Now they're not going to pick up the first down even if he catches this. That hit all shoulder pad. You know, charge Cutler with assault with that one. <laughs> and so now Potlish. Drives one to Randall Cobb. He's fearless. Likes to take it in under heavy duress. Cross the 45. Four yard return. Here comes Rodgers up seven. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. By Lowe's. Lowe's never stop improving. And by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. About those names and faces in this rivalry, some of the greatest this league has ever known. Best starting field position for Green Bay and Starks goes back a half a yard is Henry Melton, who has a nice play for his sack, drags down. James Starks and a nice job by Henry Melton we saw him on the sack earlier and in, in a guy who started the season off against Atlanta playing very well now they were starting two young offensive linemen in that game got pretty much shut out last week against the Saints but you know, we talked about it coming in they needed to get some pressure from that front four. Henry Melton now the last couple of defensive possessions he's done a nice job. Melton's got three tackles and a sack. Aaron Rodgers throws behind Ryan Grant, who gets popped at the end of it by Tim Jennings. It'll be third down and 11. And so far, the Packers have handled Julius Peppers. Yeah, they really have. And, uh, you know, for Marshall Newhouse to come into this game because of the injury to Brian Balaga. And hold his own. Now he's not faced them every time. We talked about that. Julius Peppers is also lined up as he is now opposite Chad Clifton. But both of those guys have done pretty well overall against Julius Peppers. And now that the crowd gets into it, it's a false start on Chad Clifton. False start. Offense number 76. Five yards coming to the third. His left knee, you're going to see buckle just a little bit right there. And, you know, those defensive linemen, when they're down in that three point stance, they're looking for any type of movement whatsoever, and off the ball they come. 
It doesn't take much. That's the fifth false start penalty against Green Bay. It's third and 16. Bears bring four. Underneath it's James Starks. Not much room to run. Nice play by DJ Moore. Tillman came in to help. A gain of five and it's fourth down. Now here's what the Bears like to do in third down situations. They call this the mug pressure by the linebackers. They'll put them up in the line of scrimmage and show that they're going to try to maybe bring them on the blitz. Instead they bail them out. They play coverage behind it. Force Rodgers to throw underneath and then come up and make a tackle and stop them on third down. Nice execution. Fair catch. Hester at his 21. Nice job by the Bears defense. Good starting field position. And now there's a penalty flag on the play. They picked it up. We're going to go to break. Good work by the Chicago defense. Bears have it down seven. Jared Bush was trying to get downfield to make a tackle on that punt. We'll go to the replay of what he had to endure on his trip. And after this first down play, it's a carry by Forte, and he's dragged down by Ryan Pickett. You know, I, I lost get, it too. I couldn't get the mug pressure. My producer wouldn't put it up, but we're going to show you the mug Jared Bush here by the Chicago Bears. Corey Graham, along with Peanut Tillman. You know, he's a gunner, Jared Bush is, and that's some of the treatment you get when you get out there on the outside on some of these punts. I don't know if Mike March is going to call another running play. It ain't working. <laughs> No, it's not. Minus one rushing Ready, yard for the game. Second and 12. Cutler had his arm hit as he let it go. It's third and 12. So the first two times they've had it, they haven't been able to do anything with it, and there's the arm being hit by Clay Matthews yeah, and on the other side of that they brought Woodson on another blitz and Matt Forte as he's really done throughout this game he does a good job of getting over there seeing it recognizing it more importantly blocking it third down and 12 over the middle the pass incomplete Johnny Knox fell down. Fourth down. It was a good thing that ball was high because you're right. Johnny Knox goes down, and then Tremont Williams is standing right there. And you know maybe Jay, just as he's releasing the ball, sees that Knox slips, and he airmails it because otherwise it's going to be right into the chest of Tremont Williams. Back to back three and outs for the Bears on offense. After that little lift at the end of the first half, that was almost blocked. Fair catch called for by Randall Cobb. MD Jennings almost got back there to block that punt. Packers have it up seven. Today's game is sponsored by Verizon. Get coverage of every NFL game on NFL Mobile. Call Star Star NFL from your Verizon phone to get NFL Mobile. Divisional battle. The Green Bay Packers have won eight straight overall, dating back to last year's. Week 16 win over the Giants. Nine, nine, nine. We need team. We need team. Troy circled Finley. The handoff is to Grant, and Ryan Grant picks up 14 yards. And that's the first first down of this second half for either side. You can get NFL Mobile now. Star Star NFL to get NFL action on your phone. As we play here in the third quarter, ten and a half to go. First down, Green Bay. Hey, Ryan Grant, he's had him a nice afternoon running the football, splitting carries with James Starks through the first two games, and today he's making the most of the chances he's getting. Averaging eight yards a carry. 
They fake it to him, and Rodgers throws for Jordy Nelson. Nelson got away from Jennings. A catch and run of 17 yards. Yeah, off the play action, the same play action that they handed it to Ryan Grant on the first down play. They wanted to come down here to Jermichael, Jermichael Finley, but Aaron Rodgers able to get outside the pocket, buy a little bit of time. Jordy Nelson keeps it alive. Well, we see that over and over and over. You know, Aaron Rodgers' ability to extend the play and and then complete the pass at the end of it. Grant has had a big day. And Ryan Grant's got another Green Bay first down. We'll go for a game break. Here's Kurt. Well, proving he's more than just a pretty boy. GQ model Mark Sanchez, quarterback of the Jets, in a rough one against the Raiders. Punched, shoved around, went to the sideline. Everybody at once say, ugh. They move his nose around a little bit. <laughs> he's back in the ballgame, tied at 17. Joe Troy Pan. All right, Kurt. That's a great run. On that last play by Ryan Grant and an excellent block by John Kuhn. Extra tight end is Crabtree. He's blocking for Grant. And Ryan Grant picks up just under 10 yards. Well, a good combination. This is what happens when you've got an offensive line that's been playing together. Here you got. Scott Wells and then Josh Sitton and they tanned him on the nose tackle and then Josh Sitton's able to get up to the next level and they've been doing that now on the last several runs by Ryan Grant which has afforded him the ability to get to the linebacker level before anybody's even able to make contact on him. This time it takes Julius Peppers falling off of his block before he's even touched. He just scooted the ball up about eight inches. And it's a first down for Green Bay at the 12. Delayed handoff starts. Briggs makes the tackle. A gain of one. Yeah, it's interesting. We, we've seen, you know, going back to the way that they've dispersed the carries between these two guys over the first two games of the season. Starks, although listed as a backup, he's gotten most of the carries. But here today, Ryan Grant has certainly been the more effective runner when he's had the ball. Eight and a half a carry. Starks at a yard and a half. Second and nine. On it. We need to, we need to. to the ten. Bears defense trying to stiffen up, and they are now in a third and long situation. Green Bay leading by seven with seven and a half left in the third quarter. Third down and nine. Starks. Briggs. Nice job by the Chicago defense to force a fourth down. It's an excellent job by Lance Briggs because Jermichael Finley lined up to the outside to that side of the field and there was so much attention paid to Jermichael Finley by the corner as well as the safety that it's one on one Lance Briggs has to make that tackle against James Starks. You see the attention Tillman is given on the outside to Finley. There was nobody there but Briggs and he makes the play. 28 yard try by Crosby. Basically a chip shot to make it a 10 point game again. The frustration from Aaron Rodgers as the drive stalls in the red zone up by 10. It turns into a 28 yard field goal by Mason Crosby. Ryan Grant's had a nice day. Crosby will kick it away with Devin Hester waiting. Bears again down by 10. It is a big weapon that's neutralized for the Chicago Bears now that they're kicking from the 35. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. 
Well, Joe, last season, Clay Matthews had six sacks around this time, but right now he only has one. But his position coach, Kevin Green, is not all that worried because Clay Matthews is just so disruptive. Matthews, or Green actually told me before the game that on those rare occasions that Matthews gets singled, well, he has to bring it home. We haven't seen sacks today, but we've seen Matthews make plenty of other plays. Back to you. All right. Well, he's got a good one to coach him in, Kevin Green. But don't forget Winston Moss, the assistant head coach and inside linebackers coach of this Green Bay defense. Cutler on first down, Klutz dropped it. No, you're right. You don't want to. You don't want to forget Winston Moss. And and I will tell you though, to follow up on on what Pam said. I can assure you that whether Clay Matthews is getting home or and getting sacks or not, he is a disruptive force on every play. I mean, this guy absolutely does not stop, and you've got to account for him. The real key is when he's not getting home, then someone on the other side's got to be the guy. Eric Walden, he's got to be able to beat the one-on-one -on -one matchups because somebody's getting it. Green without Frank Zombo out with that scapula issue, broken scapula here during preseason, second and ten. Cutler just misfires on Matt Forte. You're going to see Tyler Klutz here at fullback. So now you got Frank Omiel. He's working him, but before Klutz goes out into the route, he's going to chip Clay Matthews, and that's hey, that's life in the NFL as a great pass rusher. And Clay Matthews deals with it week in and week out. Julius Peppers deals with it the same way. And all the great pass rushes around the league. As an offensive guy, you go into the meeting on Monday and you look at the film, and you first thing you look at is, okay, what do we got to have? What are we going to have to do to neutralize this particular pass rusher this week? Because you're facing one every single day. Cutler looking for his first completion this half. Instead, Jarius Win brings him down for the second time this half. Another sack and a loss of nine. Yeah, and so when they're paying attention to Clay Matthews as they were again over here, then this guy's got to beat the one on one matchup with Jamarcus Webb. And as soon as he gets to the quarterback level, he comes underneath, and then he's able to make the hit and the sack on Cutler. Bears have gone three and out all three times this half. Hodlish hits it. Fair catch called for hauled in by Cobb. And there is no flag. Jay Cutler with nowhere to go except down in the arms of Jarius Wynn. Pack has it up 10. Illinois native Danica Patrick. Here today watching the Bears and you sir see her in Daytona. Hard to believe someone that pretty can be that tough <laughs> and drive that fast. Starting from the 48 already up by 10. Big series here for the Bears defense for the Green Bay offense and they start with James Jones a gain of six. How about when we were visiting with Aaron Rodgers the other day on the phone, Joe, and he was talking about what the Super Bowl meant to him and winning it and said he's never really felt a great deal of pressure before games or you know trying to live up to expectations, and that's a good thing considering he followed in the footsteps of Brett Favre, but he admitted that winning the Super Bowl has made him play even more relaxed than he already was. We need to Bad news for the rest of this conference as Ryan Grant is dragged down by Briggs. Down by contact, no fumble, but a loss of one. He said, Yeah, I don't have to ever worry about having that knock against me. He even was aware of it when they lost that overtime playoff game in Arizona a couple of years ago that, well, he hasn't won a playoff game. Now they can never say that he hasn't won at all. Super Bowl 45 MVP. Third down and five. Finley at the top of the screen. 
Rodgers over the middle. The pass is broken up. Good work by Merriweather as he banged into the body of Greg Jennings. Yeah, it sure was. And, and Aaron Rodgers expecting man coverage based on the pre-snap look. He wants to work the middle of the field. He had a chance at the bottom to James Jones if he had seen that they did go to zone coverage there on the back end. But Merriweather, he's able to drive on that ball. That's a, that's a nice job defensively by the Chicago Bears. The way the offense has been struggling, they couldn't afford to give up more points on this drive. Hester stays away, and this ball is downed at the two. Pat Lee was down there to make the play. B.J. Raji, a star was born in January here in Chicago. The play that we call has some type of coverage on the back. Pass is picked off. This is a dream come true. B.J. Raji for the touchdown. I think the dance is a little more famous than the touchdown, but uh, I, I think the other way around. It was basically a spur of the moment thing. I go into the game, I don't think I'm going to score, so I don't have nothing planned for that. I made the hula dance famous. Now you have to wait and see what's next. This guy is a tremendous athlete, and I say that seriously. Somebody with a 32-inch vertical leap. Ready. Ready, and he's right in the middle of that defensive front. As Forte gives the Bears a little breathing room out to the five. But Troy, when he scored that touchdown, he became the heaviest player in NFL history to score a touchdown. He's a good athlete, and he takes a lot of snaps. And though he's a big guy at 337. He led nose tackles last year, six and a half sacks. He can move. He sure can. Third on the team last year with those sacks. And the Chicago Bears had the fridge, and the Green Bay Packers have the freezer. He had a touchdown, which turned out to be the difference. And that 21 14 win to send the Packers to Super Bowl 45. Cutler. A lot of contact, no flag. Devin Hester. And Charles Woodson. And Hester can't believe it. We'll see what happened here on the outside. Definitely there's contact, and oh, I agree. I agree with Hester that there has to be a flag there. There's kind mean, of obviously Charles Woodson got turned around because of a nice route by Devin Hester, but if Hester had been able to, to stay on course without the contact. That's probably a touchdown. It was a well thrown ball by Jay Cutler. No flag, surprisingly. Wow. And now it's third down and seven. Cutler's thrown nine straight incompletions. This one is caught. Penalty flag comes in, and Sonsenbacher has enough on the catch for a first down. There are two flags on the field. I think this one might be a make good. Holding defense number 21 is the crime. Play results. First down. Cutler does a nice job of, of hanging in the pocket. You see they're bringing linebacker pressure and he makes a nice throw. I mean there's not a lot of places to put this ball. You see the contact but you know obviously that should have been a penalty on the previous play. You look at Charles Woodson the most penalized player for the Green Bay Packers last year. And that's why I mean he's very physical he doesn't run like he used to he wants to engage you know and have those type of physical matchups but they caught him on that one now Wildcat formation Cutler at the top of your screen but Hester with a false start false start off to the 23 five yard penalty is still first yeah, no excuse for that either on the outside all you got to do is look at the ball. Hester got a little bit anxious. It was going to come back to him. Might have been some type of reverse. So that trick play goes back into the bag for another week. Well, March has got a few more he'll pull out. <laughs> and it's first and 15 from the 10. Not yet, not. Everybody knew the snap count except the center Garza. Everybody moved except the football didn't come up in time. And 
And now with two minutes left in the third quarter. It's second and 16. Cutler wide open and it's dropped by Johnny Knox. Well, what can you say? A perfectly thrown ball. Johnny Knox running free right up the seam. You got to make the catch. He hit him right in the face mask. He never got his hands up either between him and Kellen Davis. A really nice route off the line of scrimmage to get past Burnett and just fails to look it in and make the play. Now third down and 16. Underneath it's Forte. They put it on his shoulders and he comes up well short. A.J. Hawk on the stop a gain of eight. This crowd is frustrated with the Chicago Bears offense in that last series. Yeah, I mean, they missed the opportunity to Devin Hester for potentially a touchdown. And then they pick up the first down because of the pass interference on Woodson. And then after that, I mean, nothing went right. They don't snap the ball. They've got penalties. And then they drop a, a third down conversion or a second down conversion that would have would have gave them a first down. Now Potlish hits it. Randall Cobb from inside the 45. He is dangerous. Winston Venable on the stop. And here are the Green Bay Packers celebrating winning that Lombardi trophy. Touched on it, referencing Aaron Rodgers earlier. They are loaded with talent, depth. They've got it all, and they are still the team to beat. Fun stuff. When you're drafted in the first round, as Aaron Rodgers was, you're drafted for one reason, and that's to win a world championship. And he got his out of the way early. Did it in his third year as a starter. Jordy Nelson makes this catch, and we're under a minute to go in the quarter. You know, pretty tough when you start talking about okay repeating and you know that's immediately what everybody wants to ask these guys as they prepared for this year and you know most teams aren't especially because of the free agency and everybody moving around but from what I've seen you know over the years this team's as poised as anyone you know and the defense is going to come along but this offense is going to carry this team and win a lot of games I'd be shocked if they're not right in the thick of it you know in late January. Rodgers completes and that's a first down for Finley. Just to back up your point there have been 10 different NFC champion teams over the last 10 years. And the last team to repeat as Super Bowl champions the 03 04 New England Patriots. The Packers are that good to talk about something like that. They lead here by 10 after three back after this. Defense trying to keep the Bears in the game. 20 to 10, Green Bay. And a first down inside the Chicago 27. Green 18! Green 18! They fake it to Grant. Throw on the run, what a throw, and a catch by Finley down to the 10. 15 yards and just a pinpoint throw from Aaron Rodgers. Well, he starts off the ball, and then it's just a foot race between him and Nick Rhodes, but he's already got an advantage on him because of where he was aligned and then the outside alignment by Nick Rhodes. You know, the Bears defensively have done a good job the last couple of times that the Packers have gotten down in the red zone, but you're right. You said it, Joe. They're being asked and called upon again to have to make a stop here and keep this as a two-possession game. Here's Grant. 
And right in the hole, Briggs makes the stop. Bears have not been able to do anything offensively in this second half. Lance Briggs with that last tackle. The defense has been able to hold the Packers out of the end zone inside the red zone the last two times they've been tested. They've been tested, yes, and, and they've been able to hold them with the Packers really getting great field position offensively. Here's Grant. Nice player, Lacker, on his back. Well, the two guys that they count on the most defensively, other than Julius Peppers, Brian Erlacher and Lance Briggs. Lance Briggs, he hits this thing hard, and then you've got Brian Erlacher coming in right behind it. So Briggs takes out the lead blocker, Kuhn, and then Erlacher's right there to finish him off. Now third down and nine. Finley at the bottom of your screen. That's where Rodgers goes for the third time in this game. A three touchdown game for Jermichael Finley. And that offense keeps on rolling. Yeah, well, they run James Starks to the flat. That gets the corner from falling back underneath Jermichael Finley. Trying to get safety help over the top, but it's the, it's the route by James Starks to the flat which caused, or it was Jennings, which causes Jennings to hesitate just for a split second, and then that's what allowed Finley to get open. A Green Bay team that won it all last year with 15 players on IR, Jermichael Finley, such a weapon, went down last October in a game in Landover, Maryland. He had a big game last year in the first meeting between these two with nine catches, 115 yards. A career high three touchdown catches today. Pack up 17. Today's game is sponsored by Corona Extra, who invites you to find your beach by Burger King, where you can enjoy the flavor of soft serve in several delicious combinations. And by Chevrolet Volt. It's more car than electric. Sun peeking through the clouds. We had rain early, a lot of it here in Chicago, and now the Bears have seen a lot of Jermichael Finley, a career high three touchdown catches. And Aaron Rodgers now in his career in the red zone has thrown 61 touchdowns, only two interceptions. This is Knox. And the tackle is made by Jamari Lattimore. Turn of only 13 yards. Watch the eyes of Aaron Rodgers. Well, Aaron Rodgers is getting a pre-snap look right now to the outside and knows where he wants to go. Watch Stelts here. He's got to get over the top. They're in. He's Tim Jennings is expecting help by Stelts over the top, but because Stelts as the safety is trying to disguise the coverage, he's not then able to get over the top and close on that as quickly as he would have had he have just lined up in it. Last Green Bay Packer tight end to have three touchdowns in a game was Keith Jackson back in 96. Here's Hester out across the 30 with the Bears first down. 15 yards to Devin Hester. There is so much that the guys will talk about on the OT presented by Lowe's. It is Ready. immediately after football. There are some interesting games that have already transpired across the NFL. Pass is picked off by Burnett. As that one got away from Jay Cutler and Burnett has his second of the day trying to get it to Roy Williams. They call that a four route. It's a 18 yard square in by the outside receiver. In this case it's Roy Williams. And if, against that coverage this is again that cover two rolled corner safety deep. If you're high on this throw then that's what happens. 
you got to be real careful when you're throwing that route and you can't let it sail on you. We've seen a number of balls the last few weeks sail on Jay Cutler. How about the day for Burnett. It's only his seventh NFL game. He was injured last week in week four blew out his knee. Now he has to basically assume the responsibility back there with the injury to Nick Collins. Burnett five tackles two interceptions. And Green Bay takes over at their own 40. Starts. Riggs. Fumble. Peppers is on top of it. And it belongs to Chicago. Back to back turnovers and it was Briggs that forced it out of the arms of James Starks. It didn't look like Starks you know, really ever had possession of the ball on the handoff on the exchange with Aaron Rodgers. You know, it, it, it was moving a little bit even when look, he was still trying to trying to gain control of it when Briggs came in and knocked it loose. Well, that's exactly what the Bears had to have. Mike McCarthy will ask did Peppers control the ball before his shoulder went out of bounds the ruling on the field is it's a fumble recovered by Peppers and the Bears the ruling on the field is a recovery inbounds being challenged by a green Bay. So it is a Green Bay challenge our first challenge of the day take a break. Come back and get the call from Mike Carey after this. Julius Peppers wondering if he has a fumble recovery. We bring in our rules expert, Mike Ferreira. What did you see back in Los Angeles? Well, I'm wondering too. This is this is one where you've got to piece two shots together. You're going to see here that clearly he does slide out of bounds and that arm hits out of bounds. But when you look at the second shot you're going to see the ball is loose but here at what point does he actually get control of the ball the hard part here even though you piece the two tough to put together but I think he's got to stay with the call. Yeah I think. Since the call is fumble recovered After by the Peppers. Reviews, here the it ruling is. on the field stands. I'm going to say there just isn't enough evidence to piece that together where the ball is with regard to him him having control of it and where that right elbow is of Julius Peppers heading out of bounds. I don't know what do you think you think Mike McCarthy agrees with that. Uh, I'm going to say no. I'm starting to think that our man Mike Pereira has a has a line right into Mike Carey. Really he's not wrong often. I'm not sure he has been wrong has he. He hasn't been wrong just the officials. Well, in the there game you go. Have been wrong. Good point. Ready, hey. So now the Bears take over that's. A turnover they needed and the pass is caught by Kellen Davis and a big tight end in for the touchdown. Well just exactly what the Bears needed turnover and then a quick score Kellen Davis. Right here at tight end, he's running a square and they just turn him loose. You know, everybody else is in man coverage. They got zone deep, but man underneath, and nobody ran with Kellen Davis. And so, an easy completion by Jay Cutler. And then, once the big fella got it in his hands, he's able to rumble it in, rumble it in for the touchdown. 6'7, 267. The pass was behind him, but he made a nice grab earlier. He let one go right off his shoulder. This one he got his hands out made the catch took it in and just like that Chicago's back in the game down by 10 Kellen Davis touchdown number one on the year 27 17 Packers. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the Chevy season of doing. The OT is coming up immediately after. NFL action here in week three and the Chicago Bears just made it a lot more interesting getting a turnover a rear long 32 yard catch from Kellen Davis fifth career touchdown and it's a 10 point game Tom wisely takes a knee and the Packers up 10 will start at the 20 back to the touchdown. Yeah two deep safeties and then man coverage everywhere else Tremont Williams has got Kellen Davis in man coverage. 
Yeah, everyone else is running, but he turns him loose. He played it as if it was zone coverage, and that's why Kellen Davis was as open as he was. We've seen this over the last now three games by the Green Bay Packers, and that's why they've given up so many big plays. There's been a number of breakdowns in their coverages with a number of different players that has allowed guys to run free. We saw it last week against Carolina, certainly saw it in week one against the Saints, and we've seen it a couple of times here today. Here's Grant. Hit by Stelts. A gain of four coming into the game. The Green Bay defense had allowed 14 pass plays of 20 or more yards, which was the second most across the NFL, second most in New England. That last touchdown was good for one. There have been five in this game, so they've given up five more. As Grant checks out, second and six. Packers are down to one timeout. Here's what sent Brian Grant off the field. The hit by Stelts, Erlacher on the other side. Second down, Green Bay, when we come back. Second down and six, James Starks bouncing it to the outside. Well pursued by the Chicago defense. Erlacher first guy there Briggs on the tackle a gain of only one third down coming up. Yeah, they're, they're getting the penetration in the middle and it's keeping the Green Bay Packer offensive line from really being able to get up to that second level to Brian Erlacher then and Lance Briggs and those guys we've seen they've been running relatively free and being able to make some plays within that running game. Jennings a big first down and he almost had it punched out by DJ Moore Jennings with a nice grab on a high throw and a first down for the Packers now they went man to man across the board you're going to see DJ Moore he's in man coverage you know Erlacher had he been able to see Jennings coming underneath he might have been able to do a little bit more to reroute him a little bit but Jennings gets off the ball he gets DJ Moore on his back hip and he gets a separation but a nice catch there by Greg Jennings 20th time in the career of Greg Jennings he's going gone over 100 yards that one a 25 yarder and a big first down a blitz picked off Erlacher now this is really nice by Brian Erlacher he shows that mug pressure I talked about a little bit earlier he shows that he's going to come on the blitz and then he bails out and Aaron Rodgers loses sight of him. He thinks he's got a straight shot never sees Erlacher bail out. He's looking off to his left. He comes back to the inside thinking that he can hit then Jermichael Finley and Erlacher gets lost in all the bodies and makes a heck of a play. The offense for Green Bay came in not having turned the ball over this season in two games. They've turned it over on two straight possessions. Fumble by Starks, interception by Aaron Rodgers. Now Omiel. Ball start. Offense number 68. Five yard penalty is still first. The old false starts at home never sit well, but Erlacher, I mean, a couple of years ago, people thought Erlacher might be finished. And he's getting better with age. Boy, he sure is. And you see, Finley comes off the ball thinking that he's got a free run and they're going to make an easy completion. Aaron Rodgers thinking the same thing. Erlacher comes out of nowhere. I mean, he makes a nice play on that ball, a lot like what he made in the week one interception against the Atlanta Falcons. You know, through three games, Brian Erlacher has been a great playmaker again for this defense. Erlacher's seven tackles, an interception. Now frustrated is Jay Cutler coming over to the bench having to use a timeout with a play clock down to one. 
Well, we've seen them really, you know, there's a there's a penalty, they back it up, they start the clock, call comes in late, or they break the huddle late, whatever it is. But, you know, in a game like this, burning timeouts because you're not getting the ball snapped, you just can't have it. Jermichael Finley, who has three touchdown catches in this game, he was hot coming over to the sideline. And now that Green Bay bench has a little different look to it with Chicago getting another turnover down by 10. Good field position at their own 40. First and 15. Cutler penalty flag flies and now Cutler is picked off intercepted by Tremont Williams as he steps out of bounds inside the 35 the flag is down it might come back Joe I think they might flag Clay Matthews at the end of that play for a hit on there Jay two Cutler fouls on the play holding offense number 63 and roughing the passer defense number 93 those fouls offset we play first down. We'd like to welcome in a new audience, and you're joining us at a key point. The Bears have just picked up their second turnover in as many possessions for Green Bay. Jay Cutler just threw an interception, but that hit up high on Eric Walden, combined with an offensive hold, means you replay the down. And the interception is erased. Yeah, no, and, and it was on Eric Walden, obviously not Clay Matthews. And no longer do you have to hit with the helmet. Now the shoulder of Eric Walden came in, but it was to the head of Jay Culler. That was the right call by Mike Carey to make. So back to first and 15. Bears are down by 10. Cutler penalty flag flies and another high throw this time for Johnny Knox. And it's a hold. Yeah, yeah it was a takedown. Clay Matthews, he's going to loop around hold as it. he starts to get Offense into the inside there. Spencer. 10 yards. Had him around the neck. Go first down. So the Bears get the interception by Erlacher, but now they've gone backward. They were fortunate on that high hit by Eric Walden to maintain possession. But now it's first and 25. Kind of goes back to that report that Pam Oliver made a little bit earlier. Clay Matthews without a sack today. But, <laughs> but he has been disruptive. More times than not, sacks don't tell the whole story. Green Bay is led throughout if you're just joining us. I say they better take care of him first. Walden coming off the edge doesn't get there. This one for Forte over the middle to the 35. We'll give you a recap if you're just tuning in or just joining our game. Aaron Rodgers, Jermichael Finley. That's the first of three. There's number two. That's Sonsenbacher. Here's the third to Finley, but then after a turnover, Jay Cutler for Kellen Davis. 32 yards in his first touchdown of the year. To make it a 10 point game. Most recently, Erlacher with an interception. Ready. Ready to hunt. Bears trying to climb closer. Down by 10. Great protection. Cutler is going to slide to bring up third and long. And they're going to throw a flag with Devin Hester and Sam Shields getting into it. To the play, a flag is thrown for Shields and Hester. They both threw shots, but I think they're going to get Hester on the call. You can see it on the outside. Cutler actually had a shot out here if he wanted to go with it. There was a face mask. Hester grabbed Shields' face mask, and then here's where they get into it at the end of the play. But that one right there, that last shot, is what got the flag. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Chicago number 23, 15 yards early, still second at third down. We set the clock to 8:17. It happened after the play. Now it's third down, and 
They could have just as easily called that on both, but it's a penalty and it makes it third down and 33 on the penalty by Devin Hester. Well, they were going to let it go. Up to this point, they were going to let it go. Even there, that shot right there, that last one is when the flag came out. Up until then, they were kind of letting them go at it a little bit more than what they typically would. I mean, that's just not smart football. It's not smart by Sam Shields either, but it's not smart by Devin Hester with an official standing right there and your team trying to get back into this thing down 10 to, to do something like that. It's a ninth penalty against Chicago. That really backs him up, and now Forte has got miles to go. Shields trips him up, makes the play. And the guy involved in it with Devin Hester makes the stop. A gain of seven and the Bears don't do anything with the Erlacher interception. Yeah I'm not sure what the Packers did on that possession but the. The Chicago Bears they just they hurt themselves I mean, with all the penalties that they had backed themselves up. Not very good. Randall Cobb waits for the punt from Podlish. Two. Out across the 25. If you're just joining us, we talked earlier about the emergence of the Detroit Lions. They're now 3 0. This division has a much different look to it, and the Green Bay Packers are going to have their hands full when they do take on that Detroit team and may battle them the rest of the season in the division. Oh yeah, this, I mean, this is going to be a great uh, division race as we move through the year. I mean, starting starting with this game right here. You know, I mean, this Chicago Bears defense once again is going to have to make a quick stop, or better yet, for them create some type of takeaway. Ryan Grant back in the game. They fake it to him and throw to James Jones. Jennings tried to strip it, could not a gain of five. We look ahead to next week in the aforementioned Detroit Lions. We'll be in Dallas. Cowboys play on Monday night at home against Washington. They'll go into that game one and one. The Lions at three and zero. Oh. There are the other matchups, including the Giants, Cardinals, Falcons, and Seahawks. And right now, the Falcons are in a battle with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Well I know this you give a young team some confidence they can get awfully dangerous and that's what we're seeing right now from the Detroit Lions. We Quick throw Jones incomplete. And I get that you're trying to stay aggressive you're trying to move the ball but they're also doing the Bears a favor throwing it and now the clock stops with 618. And it turns into a big third down for Green Bay. I think they've got so much confidence in Aaron Rodgers and their skill players, which they should. I mean, a pass like that, you're thinking, hey, we've got to remain aggressive. We've got to, yes, take time off the clock, but we've got to get first downs. But when you drop that ball, now clock stops. Another big third down here. Erlacher is showing blitz. He backs out. Comes underneath Cobb and Rodgers has nowhere to go until now. And a first down catch made, Greg Jennings. 11 yards on third and five, and they put in the hands of number 12, and he finds his top target. Well, that's what happens. You know, they, they don't maintain containment on the outside, and so Aaron Rodgers is able to get flushed to his left. And you just can't cover a guy like Greg Jennings for five, six, seven seconds. I mean, that's a good job there by Tillman, but eventually you're going to create separation, and Aaron Rodgers is going to complete the pass. That's a career high nine catches now for Greg Jennings. See if they go to the run game. That'll be flags instead. Rodgers frustrated. Before he had snap, something he liked. Delay. I still first down so first and 15 on a delay of game. Under five and a half to go. Greg Jennings has had a career day. With nine catches. Jermichael Finley has had a career day with three touchdown catches. 
And the way Greg Jennings' game day started today, it looked like he was going to have even a better day than what he's had. And he started off red hot early. Now to the ground with Ryan Grant. He runs into the body of Anthony Adams. Big body to run into and no game. But under five to go, the Bears have two timeouts. Well, that Bears defense is, has been on the field a long time here in this game. I mean, time of possession. Packers have had the ball for 35 minutes and counting. Jones. Tim Jennings can't bring him down. But with Adana J chasing in Lance Briggs. Play has made no gain and out of bounds stops the clock. The Chicago Bears are next at home against Carolina. Green Bay is at home against Denver. And the next time the Bears and Packers meet will be in Green Bay on Christmas. Third down and 15. Lovey Smith in his eighth season is eight and seven. Playoffs included against the Packers since he took over here in Chicago. Coach of the year in 05 took his team to the Super Bowl in 06. Timeout, Chicago. For six. And now Chicago has to use their final timeout. Here is Kurt Menefee. What's coming up on the OT? Coming up after your game on the OT presented by Lowe's, we'll have all the scores and highlights, including the Bills' big upset over the Patriots and the Lions' best start since 1980, plus all the post-game sound, including exclusive footage from winning locker room. It's all coming up on the OT after you're done. Joe Troy and Pam. All right, so the clock was stopped, but the Bears had to use a timeout defensively. It's third and 15, and now each side has only one timeout left. So much goes on at the line of scrimmage between Erlacher and any opposing quarterback, and that is no different with Aaron Rodgers. I think this is an interesting call right here. I mean, they're going empty set, so it appears they're going to throw it, but the third and 15, that's that's not an easy one to pick up. They could have ran the ball, forced another timeout by the Bears. And now Aaron Rodgers does the Bears a favor by throwing it into the ground under pressure. Jordy Nelson the closest to it. And I don't know if the ball crossed the line of scrimmage. There's uh, a flag at the 44. And we'll get the call from Mike Carey. The clock is stopped with 404. Pressure by Adana Jay and Briggs. We're down field number 74. It's the climb. Fourth down. So an eligible man downfield it was T.J. Lang, and it's declined. So the punt will come. 4:04 left, and Chicago has one timeout. Yeah, I, I question that call by Mike McCarthy. I, I rarely do that with him because I like the way he calls a game. But I think in this situation, with the Bears with just one timeout, third and 15 is really, really difficult to overcome. Run the ball there, force the Bears to use their last timeout. I think it would have been a much better play. Maste hits it. Hester says stay away and it hit a Green Bay player in the backside after it took a bounce that hit back up tight end Ryan Taylor Fox animation domination is finally here with a night of season premieres it's complete comedy chaos tonight with all new episodes of television's most animated night Fox season premiere Sunday starts tonight at 8 Eastern 7 Central right here 355 to go and the Bears down by 10 to start at the 32. Well they're going to have to force the issue you know there's no question that the Packers are more than likely going to to be in a somewhat of a prevent type of defense not give up too much man to man type stuff especially to someone like Johnny Knox or Devin Hester give some help to those outside guys 
And so Jay Cutler is going to have to try to fit some balls down the field in some tight spaces. Cutler's been sacked twice. For 10. First down across the 45. Desmond Bishop tripped him up. Nice 15 yard play to get this drive started for Jay Cutler and the Bears. Now sometimes that first play is the most difficult. Once you complete that one, then you get the defense on their heels. Here's one caught by Sansenbacher. Woodson immediately on his back, a gain of six. Well, I don't like, well, it looked initially like Cutler was going to move the receivers and have them flop sides, which would only eat time. Instead, he kept them where they are, the right thing to do, so that he can get another snap off quickly. Second and four blitz. Bears pick it up and Cutler goes down. Held on to it for a long time and Jared Bush gets the sack. Yeah, that's on Jay Cutler because he had Devin Hester on this square end and you've got to turn it loose right there. And if he does, it's a completion, an easy completion at that. And, and Jay just didn't trust what he saw. He's sliding in the pocket late with the ball and then takes a sack. And a loss of eight bringing up third down and 12. Two downs to get 12 yards. Here's Knox who had a big drop earlier. Fourth down. A gain of seven. Woodson on the stop and with a fourth down play coming up. Bears need a first down to have any chance. And they have to call the play at the line. Cutler throws and it's broken up. Knox, the intended receiver, and Shields got his hand in there to stop it. Green Bay will take over. Running a square in, and, and right there, you know, Knox has got to be able to keep running. I mean, he had him beat. He had Shields beat. And then once he got separation, he slowed up a little bit. That's when you really got to kick it in and keep the separation and then give your quarterback an easier throw. So Knox back to the bench and this one will belong to Green Bay who will go to three and oh two fifteen left Chicago only one time out they do have the two minute warning. But they are down by two scores down by ten. And there were some promising moments for Jay Cutler in this offense but in the end they will drop their second straight. Barring the impossible as Ryan Grant takes it back to the line of scrimmage. The Bears will let it go to the two minute warning with one timeout in their pocket down by 10. Two minutes left here in Chicago. America's game of the week and the team that won it all last year. Two minutes away from a 3 0 start and their ninth straight win. Aaron Rodgers looking for room to run and he will slide as Tillman goes after him. A minute 52 left and Chicago will spend their final timeout. Between September 15th and October 15th the NFL and its clubs honor the contributions of their Hispanic fans players and communities through designated games and celebrations fans can learn more at NFL.com slash Espanol minute 52 left third down and seven meanwhile this is a game numbers and stats after all the talk about balancing out the attack and running the ball more. The Bears ran it 11 times for four yards in this game. That's it. And that is the fewest rush yards for the Bears in a game since 1952. And nobody's going to complain too much because they had some success throwing the ball and they had a better performance than we saw last week. But the reality of it is. When you call runs, you've got to do something with it. You know, you've got to pick up yards, and it puts a heavy burden on Mike March and the offensive staff when you're trying to maintain balance and yet you're not having much success when you call. 
Green Bay showed just enough with their run game in particular that man Ryan Grant to make the Bears respect the run but it was damage done through the air by Green Bay's offense and with the OT presented by Lowe's coming up you've got Vic's post game controversy I'm anxious to see what that's about the Bills upset the Pats and Detroit's three and oh and I'm sure they'll break down this one on the OT presented by Lowe's coming right up. And I think what happens Joe for those people that didn't watch this game tonight on the post game shows they'll be saying well yeah how can the Bears win when you only run the ball 11 times you know that's immediately what people fall back to when they're trying to analyze a football game but anybody watching this game would not say they should have run it more than they did. Penalty flag comes down as the catch is made on the far side of the field by Knox. A total deke by Devin Hester. A flag is down, however, back inside the 20. And the referee and the officials are calling this back. It was an interesting play with Devin Hester moving as if he was going to catch it, and the punt was in the direction of the far sideline, but they're calling a hold against Chicago to erase the play. How about that man that thing was set up beautifully during the return. Oh man holding, receiving team number 21 10 yard penalty first down. What a great call by Dave Tobe and nice nice design as Hester everybody's eyes are always on Hester he comes forward but it's Knox it's left back there to take the punt but there's a hole to erase what would have been one of the plays of the early season. Dave Tobe cannot believe it. I mean, he has given the official an earful. I mean, he didn't talk about not needing to hold anybody. There's nobody on that side of the field. Watch Devin Hester. He's calling for a fair catch. Everybody's eyes go to Hester. Meanwhile the punt is on the other side of the field and the only person over there is Johnny Knox. Uh, but I, I didn't Corey Graham was in that shot. I, I didn't see him anywhere near anybody. I didn't either. Here is Matt Forte. But no timeouts left. If we have a better angle of it we will try and present it to you before we go off the air but. Penalty was called for a hold. And now time is running out on Chicago. Now the snap hits the center, Garcia. Rather, Garza's Cutler takes it out of bounds on second and one, picks up a first down. Here it is again. Let's take a look and see if we can see anything in the way of a hold. Do they call it against this? This might be Corey Graham right here. So there it is. Grand. It's him, and he's he, there's no one there. I mean, he the he's not touching anybody. He wasn't even near anybody. I mean, I'm pretty sure they called it on 21. Our spotter Dave Schwab is saying they called it on 29. There is no 29. Either way, again, I mean, there's nobody over there at the end of this game. It's a 10-point win for Green Bay. What could have been a huge lift and at least a chance for Chicago is eliminated on that hold on the punt return by Johnny Knox. So the Packers are now 3 0. The Bears are 1 2. We'll take a break and come back. Aaron Rodgers and his Packers have won nine straight, dating back to last season. Back after this. Fox Sports thanks you for watching this presentation of the National Football League. The NFL is online at www.nfl.com.